What's up, everyone? Jason here from PyQuant News. If you've heard me say before that no single metric tells you the whole story, you might not know what I'm talking about. So what I am talking about is that when you're looking at the results of a trading strategy, either a back test or your live results, you can't just look at P&L or Sharp Ratio to really understand the full dynamics of the strategy. There's just too much going on. You really need to look at all the metrics and understand the full scope of the strategy. So what's the drawdown? What are the tails, skew kurtosis, etc.? The problem for most of us is that A, we don't know everything to look at, and B, it takes a lot of work to get all the code ready to actually do this analysis. Well, lucky for us, we have a Python library called PyFolio Reloaded that does all the work for us in literally one line. Let's check out how it works. All right, so I'm going to do a simple example here, and I will just be looking at a single stock. Now, I want to reiterate that PyFolio Reloaded plays very, very nicely with a backtest library called Zipline Reloaded. So if you're looking at Zipline Reloaded and doing your backtesting there, you can use PyFolio seamlessly with Zipline. You can also use PyFolio with your own portfolio results. As long as you can get a single Pandas series of daily returns of your portfolio, then you can use PyFolio. But for today, we're just gonna look at a uh, simple data stream of Apple and NVIDIA. Note that I also have SPY here, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna use YFinance, download this data, it takes just a second. We are then going to compute the daily returns, and what we end up with, of course, is a Pandas data frame with Apple, NVIDIA, and SPY daily returns in the columns. Okay, so what we wanna do here actually is use SPY as the benchmark, and I'll show you why that is the case in a second. So we're gonna do some, some fancy pandas work and say returns.pop, which takes the column off by the key, the column name, and it returns that result. And then we will sum the portfolio returns by row. So we're doing this because we're proxying a simple portfolio of 50% NVIDIA, simple uh, 50% Apple, and again, you can use whatever portfolio construction you want. The point of this video is not to construct a portfolio, it's to show you how PyFolio works. So once that's done, just takes you know 10 milliseconds, we have a Pandas series with daily returns of SPY, and we have a Pandas series of our portfolio returns. Of course, that portfolio is equally weighted in Apple and NVIDIA. Not a bad bet, actually, looking in hindsight. All right, so simple enough, we are going to run one line of code and pfpyfolio.create full tear sheet. It takes the portfolio returns, it takes benchmark returns, and set context just deals with the charting. When I load this, it takes a second to start printing. I'm gonna move myself over here. But you can see a whole bunch of statistics. And then we have cumulative returns, we have the actual equity curve of the portfolio. We've got some return, daily returns on a chart. We've got a portfolio beta. So how does the, how sensitive is our portfolio relative to SPY? And I'll go back through some of this. I'm just showing off all the charts. The rolling volatility of the strategy, the rolling sharp ratio, the drawdown periods, underwater plot, all sorts of heat maps and annualized return charts. Wow, 2020, over 200% on this return. Um, we have a stress test as well. All right, so let's take a quick look. And when I talk about painting a picture, I'll go through some of the key risk statistics and explain what they mean. So the annualized return of the strategy over the 35 months with 40%, that's 40% per year, not bad. Overall cumulative returns were 174%. However, we had quite a bit of volatility. So annualized volatility was 86%, which ultimately gave us a sharp ratio of 0.83. So sharp ratio is saying for every one unit of risk, how many units of return? It's the annualized return divided by the standard, uh, the standard deviation of the volatility. The comma ratio compares your equity curve to your drawdown, so this is a good relative view of how well you did relative to your drawdown. And as you can see, we had quite a bit of drawdown, 75%. I don't know that I would hold a strategy with a 75% drawdown. My heuristic is something closer to 40%. Skew, I like to look at skew, I'm gonna skip these for a second here. I like to look at skew because it gives me an idea of the fat tails. So if you have a, a strong negative skew, what you're saying is that you have some big negative returns. We have close to zero. Kurtosis is actually 3.12. So this is uh, kurtosis, excess kurtosis. You have three 
a, a kurtosis of three. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little confusing here, but kurtosis of three is actually pretty close to a normal distribution, okay? Daily value at risk is 10%. That's crazy. So that's saying that on any given day, we have a 5% chance of losing 10% of our portfolio. Wild. And uh, we can say with the alpha that we don't actually have outsized returns above and beyond the benchmark. So our alpha measures the alpha intercept in a linear regression of the returns of the portfolio against the benchmark. And we do have a positive, excuse me, we do have a positive alpha. So that means we did outperform the bench, the benchmark. However, we do have a beta of nearly three. So for every 1% change in SPY, our portfolio changes 2.9%, okay? Pifolio will give us the top drawdown periods and you can see we are currently in a drawdown. We have the cumulative returns, otherwise known as the equity curve. So you could see that during the COVID relief rally, we were almost 10x on this portfolio. And then of course, when the, when the world regained its consciousness and interest rates started to rise, the portfolio came off a bit. The gray line there is the benchmark. Some other charts that we don't care about, rolling beta. So this is the sensitivity of our portfolio relative to SPY on a six month and 12 month basis. You can see it's pretty sensitive to the underlying benchmark, the rolling volatility. Uh, it's super important to always look at the evolution of these metrics, right? If you just were to look at 0.8% volatility or 0.8 volatility as the average, you would miss the fact that you had 120% volatility and then you had as low as 40% volatility. So it's very important to understand the, the dynamics of this. Same with the Sharpe ratio. This pretty much coincides with the equity curve, but you can see that the Sharpe ratio or our risk adjusted returns were quite healthy for a very long time. Again, when our strategy fell off a cliff, you could see that the uh, Sharpe ratio came down along with it, but still on average, we were over one, one, which is great. This is a great visualization of your drawdown. And then of course you can see what the returns actually did during those drawdown periods. You have heat maps of monthly returns, annualized returns, the distribution of monthly returns. And this is the stress test. So what Pifolio will give you is snapshots of time in, in understanding how your portfolio did relative to a particular point in time. So over the COVID period, I'm scrolling up, you've got this stress event. Sorry, I missed it because it's only one. The average daily return was 27 basis points. The, the worst daily return was 31%. So on one day we lost 31%. And then the max was 27%, so we recovered. You know, note here that I'm only running this during COVID, right? So this would be a lot more interesting if you ran this a lot further. Uh, but in this short video, I just wanted to demonstrate the functionality of Pifolio, let you know what's out there, and make sure that you're checking a whole bunch of statistics against your strategy, not just one. Take care. I'll see you next time.